comedian everyone's chattering about. It's Sarah Millican. <laughs> Somebody just wooed, that's quite terrifying, and my mum must be in. Uh, hello, uh, it's lovely to be here, it's amazing, what a beautiful theatre, it's lovely to be here. I, uh, I drove here today, and uh, I've only been driving three years, and uh, when I passed my test, my dad's quite a practical man, and he said, uh, there's three things you always need to have in the booty of your car. You need a blanket, you need a shovel, and you need a flask. And he's right, because whenever I've killed a man, I'm always parched. <laughs> Hey, that would work now. But I, uh, I live on my own. I do like living on my own. Uh, but I always worry about, like, if I'm on my own and somebody breaks in, what do I do? What do I hit them with? I've got to think of these things. And I talked to a couple of my friends and I asked my first friend and she said, uh, oh, I don't really know. And I said, well, what would normally be to hand? And she went, empty bottles. <laughs> I said, I don't really know if you'd notice if somebody broke in. I don't care who you are. Shut the door on your way out. <laughs> I feel a bloody draft. <laughs> By my other friend, I said, what would you hit somebody with? She said, I've got a, a rounder's back down the side of my bed. I mean, for protection. Um. <laughs> but she's been told by a policeman that that's not allowed. It's classed as an offensive weapon. The only way she's allowed to have a rounder's back down the side of her bed is if it's accompanied by something it would normally accompany. So now she's got a rounder's bat and a rounder's ball as well. <laughs> and I'm the same because I've got a massive knife and a massive fork. <laughs> so if somebody breaks in with a big lump of steak, I'm champion. <laughs> but I, uh, I often do my food shopping late at night because I'll be driving home from a show or from a gig and I'll go to the 24-hour supermarket and I went to to one recently, two weeks ago, I went to Asda, two in the morning. And I just needed a few bits, just the sort of things I need to live my life, you know, microwavable dinners and tash cream. And, uh, <laughs> the lady laughed particularly loud upstairs there. <laughs> so I get to the till, two in the morning, get to the till. I've been driving for three hours, I'm quite tired. And there's no tills on, of course there's no tills on, there's never any tills on. You've got to go to the self-service. And I don't know about you lot, but I don't like the self-service. Because I used to work in a shop. And I'm really good at this. And the last time I did it, I got paid and a uniform and discount. I'm not happy. <laughs> so I get up with my basket. I start ringing things in. First couple of things go through quite well, without a hitch seamlessly. And, uh, and then the third thing, it just said, you didn't put that in the basket. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. It's an eight pound cardigan. How heavy do you think it is? <laughs> but unfortunately, the machines don't respond to this face. <laughs> I had to get a lady over. So the lady came over, she did whatever she has to do and it was all fine again. And I got on a bit of a roll. And I got maybe five or six things in, buzzing and bagging and buzzing and bagging and buzzing and bagging. And then he came up with a blank screen that said, check and wait. And we're like, I haven't got anything on the scales. I'm buying tash cream and microwaveable dinners. There's no need to put anything on the scales. I'm really tired, I just want to go home. Why has it got check and wait? And then I realised that my belly was on the scales. <laughs> find out how much my belly would cost if I wanted to buy it back. <laughs> and I'm certainly not subtle enough to get it on the bargain area. <laughs> so I just put it down as Satsumas and legged it. <laughs> but I, uh, I've got, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a lovely boyfriend. He's, he's very sweet. Uh, he's the nicest person I've ever met. But he, uh, he does have asthma. I told my friend, and she went, oh, and first of all, I thought she did as well. Um, <laughs> she said, I love men who've got asthma. I said, why? She said, they're so sensitive. I said, yeah, to dust. <laughs> but whenever I'm abroad, I really miss him. So what I do is I go on Skype. You know, Skype, this thing where you can see each other through your computer screen. It makes home feel that little bit closer if you can see their faces as well as hear their voices. And uh, the last time I was away, I was away for six weeks. And um, I missed him terribly, so I was Skyping him every day. And one of the days, I got really quite flat and quite down, and I just wanted to go home. And when I rang him, there was such a well of emotion in here that when his face came up on the screen, I didn't say, hello. The first thing I said was, you're too far away. So he moved the webcam. <laughs> I didn't 
isn't that the hard to tell him I meant geographically? <laughs> it isn't like that. Is that better, love? <laughs>